of 2021. Oh, hold on. Uh, yeah, hey, Kels. Kel no, Kelsey, it's the pre-show. Kelsey, you're supposed... Oh, I did... Oh, oh yeah, that's my bad. Ooh, awkward. Well, it is just me today because I forgot to send out an email notification. But welcome to 2021 to the pre-show. We are so glad you're here. My name's Daniel. If you're wondering what the heck is going on, the pre-show is the beginning of our service. It's a chance for you to kind of begin to settle in to wherever you're going to be taking in the service today. You'll hear some announcements of what's going on. We'd love to see you in the chat. Good morning, Ashley. Good to see you. Alexander Jordan, good morning as well. Sharon, happy new year. Happy New Year to all of you, our Princeton campus, our Surrey campus, and everyone all around the country that also checks in. I see you, Saskatoon and Prince George, uh, and anywhere else, even in Mexico and possibly the UK. Good to see you. Um, but we are so excited that you're here. And a bit of the, the hope and the heart of Horizon Church and everything we do is kind of twofold. Number one, we believe that Jesus was who he said he was. And he is available for you to personally encounter him. And secondly, we believe that an encounter with Jesus radically transforms everything in your life, including my voice crack, which just happened there. That was awesome. But we believe that the presence of God has the ability to take whatever you're going through and shape it and change it and also shape and change you. So our hope and our heart is that throughout today's service that you would encounter the presence of God in a life-changing way. We know it's a little bit different online, but what I love is that wherever you're sitting right now, whatever living room, whatever uh, car you're driving in, wherever you're watching the service, the promise of the Bible is that where you are, the presence of God is there with you, and we're believing today God has something special for you. So it's going to be fantastic. Um, and a couple of tips for how to get the most out of your online church experience because we know it's a little bit different. Number one, find the least distracted place. When I'm at home, I've discovered in my living room with my little daughter running around playing with all of her toys probably isn't the best place. Uh, for me, I got to throw some headphones on so I can focus. And uh, one little pro tip, uh, and this I always did this when we're in person or online, is grab a notebook and a Bible just to be able to write down some notes. It's just an easy way not to pick up your phone, jump on Instagram or do something else, but you can actually write down what you're hearing and what God's saying to you as we worship and as we jump into the message. Uh, the second tip is to join us in this chat here. Uh, you don't get to see each other on the, in the lobby and give each other a high five or a hug, as we're well aware, but this is one way just to see who's here. So I'd love to see who's on today. It's going to be good. Cherith, good morning. Good to see you. Elena, good to see you. Joel, good to see you. So if you're watching today, jump in the chat. Just say hi. If nothing else, it makes me feel better to know that you're here with me. Um, and lastly, the third thing is invite someone to church. Again, starting a new year. A lot of people are starting New Year's resolutions, although this year is a a much different year going to a new year resolution but what a better way to start the year than invite someone to church hey why don't you join me online jump online say hi in the chat you can either share it on your facebook or on your instagram or you can just copy like the youtube link and send it to them in a text message a great way to invite someone to church uh, just a couple ways to get the most out of your online church experience uh, with the new year, we don't have a lot of announcements. We have uh, two announcements. But before we get to the announcements, I want to let you know, for those on there, on the chat, that were like, oh, someone else will throw a wave. I don't need to throw a wave. Uh, we have a giveaways happening. We got some Q&A or uh, some trivia. And so get ready in that chat. because you're, And we're going to do uh, guys versus girls because that seemed to incite the men to chat a little bit more uh, in there. But two announcements. Number one. Next week, January 10th, we'll start our 21 days of prayer and fasting. For those who want to pretend like their computer just glitched and something went wrong and they didn't hear that, we'll say it one more time. Prayer and fasting starts January 10th. And we're going to hear a bit more about that today. But I want to encourage you, if you're like me, maybe you're not, maybe you're more holy than me, but in years past, there's been moments where my prayer is, God, do you want me to fast? Rather than, God, what do you want me to fast? If you follow Jesus and he's your Lord and Savior and you're doing your best to, to follow and be like Christ, prayer and fasting is part of our walk. It's part of our spiritual disciplines as we see the character of Christ form into us. So I want to encourage you this week, before the 10th, don't wait till next Sunday. This week, take some time and say, God, what would you have me fast over the next 21 days? And it's going to be so 
exciting as we jump into that. And lastly, we have youth starting up again this week. If you have a student who's grade 6 to 12, uh, youth is back up. We took a two-week break for Christmas, uh, so that'll be happening. Watch your emails. Parents and students will be reminding you of your Zoom links that'll be coming up this week. We've got a new series started online, and it's just going to be great to see our small groups again in that. So prayer and fasting next week, and we got our Zoom uh, youth happening again this Wednesday uh, the 6th. It's going to be fantastic. Uh, now, we got some trivia. We're going to, you know, going into 2021, most of you want to, uh, you know, forget. It's like 2020 was like high school. You got through the test. And you want to forget all the information and never use it again. But we have some 2020 trivia because it was a long year. And so we want to get into some of it. So first question, our chat host can throw the question up there so you have it as well at this point. Uh, but the number one question, first one is, who performed the halftime show at the Super Bowl this year. Who, I'll give you a hint, it was two people for a $5 Starbucks card. Oh, uh, Elena, you can't win. Alexander, you can't win. Uh, but if you're watching, you can jump on. The, the, uh, rude, yes, okay. Jen, did you see the Lynx laying on the phone lines at the Mini Mart? I'm not sure. I did not see that Lynx. Uh, anyone else, though? Who performed the halftime show? Ah, Dietrich. Well, okay. I'm going to give that one. Okay. Yes. J-Lo, Shakira. It was forgettable, so you don't need to remember it, um, in my opinion. Uh, but anyways, anyone else? who, If you won in the last month, you can't, but we're going to jump on. Number two question. So, Dietrich, make sure, I'm, and I'm looking this way because I'm looking right at him. He's here, but he didn't know the answer, so it's fair. And he hasn't won in the last two months. So make sure you email daniel at horizonchurch.ca if you'd like your gift card. Uh, and I'll make sure I get it to you. Question number two. What day was the first case of COVID in BC? What day was the very first case of COVID in BC? B, C. We can throw it on there. We're waiting for it. Wait for it too soon. Yes. Thank you, Alexandra. It is a little bit too soon, but you can't talk about 2020 and not getting into that. We're waiting for it. First case. First case. We're waiting for it on the chats. Here we go. You might need to get on Google. I had to get on Google. I was surprised at how early it was. February 12th is not correct. There was one before that. March 25th was not correct. There was one before that. It was in Vancouver. Someone had flown in and there were a positive case. They were here. Um, get on the Googles. I'll give you a hint. It was in January. It was in January. Waiting for it. Come on. And this isn't everyone that's like, oh, I'm pretty sure I had COVID because I had a cold. You probably, and back in February, everyone thinks they probably had January 12th. No, nope, that's too early, Ashley. January 28th, Sharon. All right, Sharon, you get a $5 Starbucks card. It's going to be great. We have that going on. And okay, we have, you know what? We have a couple more questions, but we're going to save it for the post show. All right, so you got to be ready for the post show because we only have 55 seconds left as we jump into this. So, what you want to do at this point, we got three more questions. So, we got Sharon and Dietrich on there. Make sure you send me your email uh, at daniel at horizonchurch.ca and you'll get the Starbucks gift card at this point. Remember our tips find a distract, at least distracted place, not a distracted place where you can enjoy service, jump into worship together, turn it up loud, uh, get your notebook out, engage in the chat, invite someone to church. It is going to be a fantastic time. Today we have actually three people, three different people speaking the message. It's going to be fantastic. So you still have like 15 seconds, invite someone to church. Uh, we'll see you at the post show. Don't stick around. We got three more questions and giveaways for you. So why don't we jump in to worship here together? Come on. It's going to be great. As we kill the last nine seconds of the post show, five seconds, four. It's great. It's coming. We're ready. Let's worship together. Good morning, everyone. We're so glad you're joining with us today. Let's just worship together.
Every heart that is broken 
Thank you. 
sing about it. And maybe for some of you, you're, you're uncertain with maybe the, the Bible verse or the context of a cornerstone. Um, in, in the times where the Bible was written, uh, a cornerstone would have been a, a large, significant stone when building any building or a house. Uh, it was the first stone that was laid down. Everything that was to come, I uh, look back to the cornerstone as, it, as its reference point. Um, and some more construction terms were to, to see if anything was true. You'd have what was called a plumb line, but anything that was true would be measured back to the cornerstone. And in Deuteronomy chapter 27, verses 1 to 5, the, the children of Israel are about to walk into something brand new. They're about to walk into the promised land, and Moses is passing the baton on to Joshua. And he says, Joshua, it's really important before you go into this next new season, before you step into the promised land, uh, they had the law that's written down, and Deuteronomy is kind of all about reminding Israel about what God had said and promised. He said, when you go into the new, the new land, once you cross the river, set up some stones. And on these stones, write the law, write the promises, write, write the directions that God had given you so that when you're in this new season, once you get into what you're about to go into, this might be your reference point. That when you're not sure, you'd go back to this pile of stones and you say, that's what God said. And when your children are walking by, I said, Dad, what's that about? You'd remind them it was a constant uh, redirection, a focus point to look back at, at what is true in times when you're wondering what is true a time of uh, a point of certainty to look back to when you're in uncertain times and as we go into the new year i think it'd be appropriate there was something that if you were around a couple years ago we did a message on the good the bad the ugly and essentially it's taken from some biblical principles where you begin to reflect before you go into the new year reflect on the last year and I want to take us through, if, you, if you're willing to do this with me, some time of prayer. If you're a journaler, maybe you maybe grab your journal and get it ready. And as we begin to look into this new year, to begin to, to look at the previous year and say, God, would you help me make sense of the good, the bad, the ugly, so that I know where I'm going into. I'm not taking things unnecessarily into this new year. I'm not taking things that you want to be dealt with. So first is the good. The Bible says to enter his courts with thanksgiving and praise. And so for the next 30 seconds, I want whether you journal it out, whether you're in the living room, you start to begin to share it. Maybe you're watching with your family and it might be a little bit different to say it out loud. Maybe go around the room, just say, here's one or two things I'm grateful for. Thank you, God, that you did this in 2020. So I'm gonna pray, but however it makes sense in your circumstance, in your situation right now, spend the next 30 seconds, whether it's journaling, whether it's sharing, whether it's praying, and just thanking God for the good things of 2020. God, we thank you that the, the, despite all the things going around, Lord, that our church is thriving. God, we thank you for the 12,600 meals that we were able to provide during Hampers, the 606 gifts that went out. God, we thank you, Lord, for the people that gave their lives to Jesus this year that went from death to life in the spiritual realm, Father. Lord, we thank you for what you're doing in my life. God, I thank you for Zoe and how she's grown this year and developed in the health of our family. God, we thank you for the home that we live in, Lord, the car that we get to drive. God, we just thank you that your goodness, despite the ups and the downs, has been persistent in and through my life, through my marriage. God, we thank you that you're still working. God, we thank you for the good. We praise you that your hand is working. It is not too weak to reach and to deliver. And it makes sense of the bad. And these are the things that maybe are beyond your control that Paul talked about this. He said, God, would you take this thorn in the flesh out? It's, it's not a sin issue. It's not a, a result of something he did wrong, but it's just the circumstances of living in a broken world. And sometimes we allow this to just be a chip on our shoulder, if I'm honest. Maybe we're just frustrated. Why did that happen? It wasn't my fault. And if we're not careful, we can carry this into the new year, this sense, this attitude of anger, of disappointment. And I'm not saying that writing it down on a journal or saying it out loud is going to make everything perfect, but it's part of processing. And God actually wants to hear what's in our heart. He wants to hear the, the good, the bad. So let's take 30 seconds. And I want us to do this. Release to God. Say, God, I just give this to you. The things that you would, would have never have wished or hoped to happen in your life. 
whether you journal it, whether you share it, whether you say it out loud, let's take 30 seconds. God, we give to you the, the losses that were beyond our control of loved ones, of opportunities, of connection, God. The, Lord, the year that we can't gather together, the missing seeing people, the hugs, the high fives, the birthdays, the celebrations. God, all of that, we, Lord, it sucks. But God, we don't know what to do with it. Lord, the things that would crush us. God, we submit that to you. We understand that your ways are above our ways. We don't, we don't attempt to make sense of it in the things that can't make sense. But God, we surrender that to you. God, if I were to continue to carry it, it would crush me. It would stop me from seeing the opportunities and the hope and the work of your spirit in my life in the day to day. So God, I don't want it. I give it to you. God, would you take it today? Lord, I surrender that to you, God. Would you take it? the bad of 2020, God, would you take it? I trust you. And the ugly. What are the things that you need to repent of before stepping into this new season? The sins that maybe you're well aware of or maybe you're unaware of. And this might be a little bit harder. So if you want to journal this one out, grab the notes application on your phone and type it in whatever you need to do in the quietness of your heart. But take 30 seconds and just repent of the things that you need to give to God that's going to stop you from walking into the promises that he has for this next year. God, we repent. God, of our attitudes. God, we repent of gossip, of talking about people who aren't there. God, we repent of, of being angry. God, we repent of being angry with you. God, we repent of the habits or the, 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 the disciplines that we let go. God, we repent of the habits that we, we fell into, whether knowingly, unwillingly, or we just gave up, said, I'm done. God, we repent of trying to maybe even get back at you by specifically not looking at our Bible or specifically disengaging because we're unhappy with what's going on and we can't control what's going on around us, but this we can control. So out of stubbornness, out of hurt, out of pain, we have disengaged. God, would you forgive us? God, would you take our sin? We thank you, Jesus, that on the cross, you made a way for us to be clean, for our sins to be forgiven. So Jesus, we come to you, our cornerstone. And at the beginning of this year, we remind ourselves of what is true about you, Jesus. The good, the bad, the ugly, we surrender it and we lay it at the altar of your feet. And Jesus, we ask that you would speak to us as we go into the message today. God, our hearts would not be hindered by the things that we're carrying that we should not be carrying. But God, our hearts will be open this morning to receive what you have for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Come on, thank you, worship team. And hey, I, I really believe that as we just walk through those that simple thanking God for what he's done and repenting and, and, and emptying our hearts of the things that clutter, that we can go into today's message. And I want to encourage you, if you don't normally take notes, grab anything to take some notes today because I believe God has something so special for you. But before we get into that, we got a short message from our kids team that we'll see right now. Hey, Horizon fam. We want to let you know that your kids can head over to the Horizon Kids YouTube channel now to watch this Sunday's vlog. Happy New Year, everyone. This week, we begin a new series for the month of January. We're learning what the Bible has to teach us about responsibility. Jesus teaches us that if we can be trusted with something very little, then we can also be trusted with something very large. And our bottom line today is love God, love others. Yep. When you start with that, God can do great things with your life. So make sure you check out this week's Sunday vlog. We can't wait for you to watch it with your kids. We'll see you guys on YouTube. Bye. Bye. Hey, good morning. Great, great morning that we have. 2021 is here. We were just having a mad scramble right here because I was like, somebody's got to signal me. Uh, but they said, when the light, look at the red light. And I'm colorblind, so I can't tell if there's red light, green light. It makes it interesting to drive with me too, let me say that. But anyway, 2020 in the rearview mirror, uh, probably more uh, excited about that maybe than in other years. I don't know. Uh, 
but we were talking this morning just before service and reminding ourselves just to live from the posture that God is good and he's on the throne and he's working out all things together for our good so I can say with confidence, even as I did at the beginning of 2020, this is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Or this is the year the Lord has made. I'm going to rejoice and be glad in it because no matter what I'm facing, God's going ahead of me. He's got my back. So uh, let's go into that looking forward to what God is going to do for us and in us and through us and to us. And Daniel kind of referenced it in his prayer and praise about leaving 2020 well. If you didn't listen to last week's message, let, let me encourage you to go to Horizon uh, Surrey YouTube and grab a hold of that one. It's, it's a message that is really perfect to leave well 2020 and step well into what God has for you this year in 2021. Uh, and as we begin 2021, as every year, uh, most of us are probably doing some kind of a uh, res New Year's resolution. Uh, something, even if we haven't spoken it out, we probably, eh, uh, I stepped on the scale yesterday and I found some things from 2020 that need to stay in 2020, but it's going to take some work to get rid of them. About 10 pounds of them, actually. I hadn't been on there since about March last year, so praise the Lord. Uh, uh, he's filled me with good things. Um, uh, so we all have probably the top one in the Western world is to lose weight. Uh, some start to exercise. The gym is full. Well, it won't be full right now, but we're, that's generally is what is happening. Starting exercise, get our finances in order, things that we're worried about. And it's good. Those are all good things to be working on, things to be working through. Uh, in fact, our bodies are a gift from God, so taking care of our bodies is an act of worship to Him. Our finances and our resources are, are given from, from the Father, and so we steward them well to honor Jesus well with what we have. But it's so easy to get caught up in these types of things that what we can see, taste, touch, that we can sometimes miss out on the most important thing. Because what's most important, the first thing in your life, is what leads your life. So if money is at the top of your list, it's going to lead all your decisions. It's going to lead your, your interactions. It's going, to, it's going to be the thing that you worry about, think about, talk about, those kind of things, if it's your body, whatever. And so Jesus uh, talks about this very clearly. And we always, as Christ followers, go back to what Jesus said. And I think Jesus was talking in, in the early part of the book of Matthew, which is written by one of his disciples that recorded many of the things that Jesus talked about. In, and in verse or chapter 6, it's called the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus said this, So do not worry, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? And maybe, am I going keto? Or No, they were not talking about dieting. They were talking about surviving. Or what shall we wear? For the people who don't know God run after all these things, and your heavenly Father, get this, knows that you need them. But seek first. Wherever you're at right now, just say that word out loud. We're going to say first. One, two, three, first. Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all the things that you're worrying about, God's going to add to your life in the way that you need them, when you need them. But you got to put him at the front. you got to put him as the engine of your life, not the caboose, not the number two or the number three, so that he can lead your life. Because we spend a lot of time worrying about things like Jesus talked about. They're important, but they're secondary. We worry about infertility. We're worried about our jobs. We worry about our, uh, what we're going to do when we graduate from university. What's it going to look like? We're worrying about our finances. We worry about our, our marriage. We worry about what, what our life's going to look like in 2021. We're worrying about when COVID will end or not end. We worry, is there a conspiracy in government to take us out? All the things that we're worrying about... They're secondary. Maybe you're a little stuck even right now. Maybe you're a little stale right now. But I want to assure you, if it's on your mind, it's on God's heart. But it needs to be secondary. Jesus said, seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. But how do we do that in a practical way? Because what's first leads my life. What's first leads. How do we get our ways, our worries, our, our, our struggles, our frustrations, our anger to be second? Because it's easy to say that, but how do we do it? And Jesus uh, really helps us in that. And he said this, and you probably, you might have, if you're older, grew up in school saying it, but we hear it at funerals, we hear it all kinds of places. It's the Lord's Prayer. In one space, he says there, Jesus said, pray this way, your kingdom come, Father, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So he says, 
Seek first the kingdom, and then he says, here's how. Start to pray that his kingdom would be first in leading your life. And so it starts with prayer. And so when we go into this year and we say, God, we want you to be first in our life. We want you to lead our life. We want you to help in every area that I'm struggling with and worried about and frustrated with and anxious about. Lead my life. One of the great ways to do it is to pray. Pray, pray, pray. And... <laughs> Pray in my relationships as it is in heaven, in my health as it is in heaven, in my marriage as it is in heaven. Let there be peace that's in heaven live in my life. Let freedom that's in heaven be in my life. In every space, what's in heaven, the kingdom of heaven, let it show up in my life. Let it be first. When the kingdom of God's first, it advances through prayer. The kingdom of God will advance in your life through prayer first. Jesus shows us the way. And we believe that prayer is one of the most important things that we can do as Christ followers. And, and some of the things that I wrote down this morning um, out of uh, 1 Timothy 2, Paul said this to his protege, Timothy, his follower. He said, I urge them. In other words, I really want to emphasize this. First of all, that prayer and petitions, and intercession, and thanksgiving be made for all people. He's like, hey guys, I really, I know you're going through a lot of stuff, and this was 2,000 years ago, but we're still going through stuff today. And he says, I urge you, I entreat you, I'm begging you, I'm encouraging you, please pray first. Let prayer be our first response, not our last resort. It's a phrase we use around here, that let prayer be our first response, not our last resort. Because prayer empowers us. Prayer awakens us. Prayer changes our heart. Prayer changes the hearts of those we're praying for. Prayer calms us. Prayer encourages us. Prayer strengthens us. Prayer lifts us. Prayer directs us. Prayer warns us. Prayer empowers us. Prayer lifts us. Prayer gives us answers that we need. Prayer helps us in every area of our life. And prayer is to be our first response not our last resort. And then we could go on and on and talk about that it, because we know it's important. We know that prayer can change our town. We, uh, whether that town's in Princeton or that town's in Saskatoon or that town's in Prince George, wherever you are, prayer can change your town. Prayer can change the lower mainland. Prayer can change our church. Prayer can change a nation. And we know all that, but somehow we know, but we don't. We're people who pray occasionally or we might pray in response to some crazy situations or we might pray when there's a crisis going on. And I don't say that in, in any incredibly, I'm not trying to demean anybody. I think it's just the reality that most of us struggle in the area of prayer. And why would we struggle? Why would the enemy try to distract you? Because when we pray like Jesus said, pray your kingdom come, it starts to show up. Your life starts to change. Your marriage starts to change. Your family starts to change. And the enemy will do anything he can. He will keep you busy doing all kinds of stuff, binging on Netflix, um, running after this kind of things, doing anything except prayer. Because prayer actually moves the needle. Prayer moves the hand that moves the world. You see, prayer, uh, his is the power and ours is the prayer. But some of us approach it and, and we just don't do it. Maybe we're content or we're apathetic. And we're like, I, I'm, I'm good. God knows what I need. If he needs something, he'll give it. If I need something, he'll give it to me. Others are fatalistic. They just say, what will be, will be. I, I, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. I, I don't know. I'm, and so we don't pray or some feel like we're unworthy. Maybe you just say, I keep blowing it. I keep, I keep screwing up all the time. I keep falling into that simple habit. How will God listen to me? Some are just proud. I got this. If I need something, Lord, I'll let you know. Others feel unqualified. I don't, I don't have the right words. I, I don't know how to pray with these fancy things. And let me say all of that at the end of the day, it's like me with my 10 pounds. I'm going to have to face it or I'm just going to excuse it. Excuses help nothing. 
but action helps everything. And when we can begin to reorient our lives to say, I'm going to put God at the first of my life. How do I do that? How do I put his kingdom first? Jesus said, pray your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I, I come on. I don't know if we've been through a year that has not exposed more than ever how much we don't control, how much we need God, how much we need the power of heaven in our lives, in our city, in our town in every space and place. And our answer is not trying harder, working harder, getting better, uh, figure things out. Our answer is the same as it's always been. I urge you then, brothers and sisters, pray first or first pray. We pray first. Let prayer be our first response, not our last resort. And whatever the reason, over the next few weeks, we want to inspire you to pray because it's going to change your life. We want to show you how to pray because it's going to change your life. And we're going to give you opportunities to participate in prayer because it's going to change your life. And behind me on, the, on either side of me are two people who have learned how to, prayer, to pray. Uh, Naomi, I think, is on this side. Yep. Naomi leads all our service prayer, and she's also part of our prayer team. So pretty much every Sunday, she's leading people that will pray for this service and helping to, to pray for you before you even get here, to pray for uh, uh, our people all scattered all around our, the lower mainland and across the nation and the world. And on this side is Emma, and Emma kind of oversees all our prayer and is the conduit for when you uh, email prayer at horizonchurch.ca, usually goes to her first, and she disseminates that. She leads our uh, prayer on Tuesday night. And over the last number of years, they've learned how to pray, pray. And I'm asking them to share because I think it's important that they were maybe in one of those things before. Maybe they were content. Maybe they didn't know how. They just knew that they needed to but didn't know how to. And they've learned and grown. And so I've asked them to share this morning a little bit, and then I'll come back at the end. So I think Emma is first. Awesome. Good morning, everybody. I just need to get myself set up here. So give me two seconds. Awesome. All right. So my name is Emma Palmer, and I want to start by saying yes and amen to everything that Pastor Craig just said about prayer. For me, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about my story. Pastor Craig had given a very general invitation one Sunday morning um, to join him for Tuesday evening prayer at 7 p.m. in the chapel. And the second the words were out of his mouth, I was plotting and planning my escape. I was an at-home mom of three little kids at the time, and I thought to myself, this is it. I'm gonna get out of the house once a week for an hour and like how can my husband possibly say no because I'm going to prayer. So that is how it all started. Um, once I started going, the very first Tuesday I went, I don't think I have missed a Tuesday since. It's one of those anchors for me that just holds me in. When Sunday to Sunday was no longer enough um, of my time with Jesus, Tuesday was an awesome next step. So I don't know where you're at right now, but maybe you're looking for that next step. Tuesday night is an awesome opportunity to just come and gather with people. You, we zoom in. I had grown up in church my entire life. I'm a second generation Christian. My mom started going to church um, but, like when she was pregnant with me and she never looked back. And so I grew up in that kind of like old school, every Sunday morning, every Sunday night, every Wednesday, we were there and prayer was a huge part of our lives. Um, in saying that, I knew I had access to the Lord, to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Um, but the majority of my prayers as I got into my adulthood were like these help me prayers. Lord, you know what situation I'm in. You know the mess I'm in. You know I need a job. You know what I need. Are you going to help me or what? And that was very much the approach I took to prayer until Tuesdays. 
Tuesday nights wasn't what I thought it was. I think we all kind of have this funny picture in our head of what prayer might be. I just want to let you know, we're not standing around in a circle holding hands. The pressure is not on where we're going around and you're thinking to yourself, oh man, this is it. It's coming down to me. I'm the next one in line to pray. What am I going to say? And you're just totally stressing out. It's not like that. Um, I remember showing up and being this wave of relief just washing over me when Pastor Craig was like, we are all going to pray together. We're all praying out loud. And it became this very interesting time of learning how to listen for me. It was this relationship where I wasn't just speaking out my usual practice, help me prayers. It became very much a, I would pray and then I would listen and the Lord would speak to me. And it became this relationship of conversation with the Lord. Um, going down, it also became, for me, a relationship with people. I am a very private person. I don't like my stuff out there. And this very much became an opportunity that the Lord gave to me where I was able to share some of my things because I had developed relationship with the people that had been coming to prayer and ultimately amazing friendships with people who were coming to prayer. So I want to tell a very quick story um, about a testimony I have of the Lord answering prayer. And I want to start it off by saying I grew up in a home where my dad was an alcoholic and it was this very tumultuous relationship with my father. Um, as I came into adulthood, my parents had separated when I was 12. And we came, my brother and I came to this point in our lives where we had received this call from a hospital. My dad was there. He was unable to care for himself any further physically or mentally. And decisions were having to be made. And the hospital staff were looking to my brother and I to make these decisions for this man that we really didn't have relationship with. And... I remember thinking to myself, what am I going to do? I have a decision to make here. Am I going to like walk away and let social services deal with it and have to deal with my conscience for the rest of my life? Or am I going to step in and like save my dad? And I didn't do either. I felt very strongly impressed to put his name on the board. We used big whiteboard a couple of years ago. And I wrote my dad's name on the board and we prayed on Tuesday nights. As we do every Tuesday, we pray for your needs as you put them in um, on the prayer request email. And an amazing thing happened. I had been praying for my dad for as long as I could remember. And I'm telling you, that was the moment. There was freedom in that moment. I gave it to the Lord. I physically wrote his name down on the board. It's just like when you write down the email for yourself and you hit send, all of a sudden faith has been activated. So I want to encourage you um, to do that. We keep the prayer um, request confidential as well, just in case you were wondering about that. We don't add names or we'll just do a first name. So let us know. But I want to say that the accumulation of hundreds of seemingly unanswered prayers from like, let's say age five, when I started praying for my dad, were answered in this moment. And the very next morning, I got a call to say, we have found a place for your dad and a home out in Surrey. His cares, his needs are going to be taken care of. And everything just washed off me. All of the shame, all of the guilt, all of the responsibility of having to deal with the situation, the Lord handled it all in a moment. And so I want to encourage you, if you have unanswered prayer, it's not unanswered. The Lord is always working on our behalf. And so I wanted to share a scripture verse with you on that. Um, it comes out of Isaiah 55, 6, and it's always interesting to me when you go into your Bible, there's these little headings, and this one is the compassion of the Lord. It says, seek the Lord while he may be found. 
call upon him while he is near. And I want to give you that promise because the Lord is always near to us. If you are brokenhearted, he is near to you. If you are sick in your body, he is near to you. He hears every word that comes out of your mouth. And I just want to encourage you today. You are not alone. Seek him. You will find him. If you need help with seeking him, email us. We would love to join with you in prayer. I want to pray for you um, just before we go. So I would just encourage you to put yourself in a posture of prayer, whether that's your hand on your heart or your hands just out open to him. And I want you to remember, we serve a God who never fails us. So Father, I thank you that your word says you are close to the brokenhearted, that you never leave us, that you never forsake us. I pray right now for a shift in people's mindsets to know that you see us as individuals, that you are interested in our lives and that you want to draw us into relationship, into two-way communication, real relationship with you. Lord, would you engage us like never before? I just want to encourage you to say with me, Jesus, engage me. Lord, as I draw near to you, I believe that you would draw near to me. And I want to remind you guys, Jesus is less than a breath away. In those moments when you are desperate, say his name out loud. Thank you so much. I'm introducing Naomi. Well, good morning. My name is Naomi, and I like to bake. Um, So much so that I will get these urges to bake the most elaborate creations right when I have the least amount of time or leisure to do so. This is called procrastibaking, and it has a definition on the internet. The art of making muffins instead of doing something you should be doing. (laughs) Case in point, yesterday I should have been going over my sermon notes, and I baked a cake. So um, this is something that I I laugh about and I can make light of, I can joke about my lack of self-discipline, my lack of of good habits and routines, um, my tendency to procrastinate. But in reality, it's something that is, it's a big struggle for me. It's a significant pain in my life that I wrestle with on a daily basis. Um, And this is true in the area of prayer as in every other area of life. Philippians 3.12 is such an, an encouragement to me. It says, not that I have already obtained this or I'm already perfect, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. I do not consider that I have made it my own, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. And if I know anything about prayer and about the Lord, it is that he is more faithful to me than I am to him. He always keeps his appointments and I'm always on his schedule, whether or not um, he is on mine. And I may not be very good at self-discipline routines, um, but I am good at showing up. I, whether I tell myself that someone's expecting me, even if I just imagine that, if, if I feel like people are expecting me, if, if, if there's, some, there's a gathering of some kind, I will show up. I'm good at doing that, whether that's a church event or some other event. Um, I'm very motivated to, to go where people are going to be. And I don't remember the exact day that I first attended Tuesday evening prayer, um, what the circumstances were that surrounded that, but I do know that there was two reasons that drove me to go there. And the first one was that I was desperate for God. And I knew that where two or three are gathered, there he is, his presence is in the midst of them. And I needed the presence of God. I needed freedom and I needed healing. I needed to be filled with all joy and peace and believing like the scripture says. And I knew that getting around other people who are filled with God's spirit was taking a step of health for myself. So the second reason was that I knew that I'm not the most self-disciplined person. And I wanted to participate with Jesus, who is the chief intercessor. I wanted to participate in prayer with him. I wanted to obey him. I wanted to pray first. I wanted, um, I wanted to, be, to be a person of prayer, as every one of us is called to be. And I knew that I was not doing that at home. I, I have four kids, um, 11 and under. At the time, I had much younger kids. I, was, I felt overwhelmed. Um, 
constantly interrupted and I wasn't praying at home, but I wanted to pray. And I just thought, okay, if I just go for one hour a week, even if I don't pray at any other time in my week, I've given him that hour. I've given him that time. And it was such a joy to me to be able to give that time to the Lord. Um, so I made that a non-negotiable time in my week. When my own self-discipline fails me and I don't turn to prayer as often as I ought to, my commitment to community has brought me back into the presence of the Lord so many times. And I can tell you, I have never regretted showing up at a prayer meeting. I have not felt like going to a prayer meeting. I have not gone to a prayer meeting and regretted it. But every time I have pushed through those feelings of of whatever it is, tiredness, whatever excuse I may have had, and I pushed through and I showed up at a prayer meeting, I was so grateful that I did. It was such a blessing in my life. I was filled with the spirit every single time that I go and I show up at a prayer meeting. Discipline is like a safety net. It catches us when our human nature gets in the way and causes us to, to stumble, to move away from the presence of God. When we have disciplines and routines in our life, it brings us back um, and centers us back in the presence of God. Um, and I'm really grateful to realize that as much as I, I, I'm not a very self-disciplined person, I do have discipline in my life. I have the discipline of community. Um, and that's, that's something that I've practiced and I've worked at and I'm so grateful that I have. But this year, um, the Lord has really been challenging me in the area of personal prayer discipline, allowing my, my community time, my time of community prayer to be more like um, the cherry on top, the backup, and less of my catalyst in my life. And it's not that I don't pray at home on my own. I do because I've practiced that discipline at home. Um, in community, and it's overflowed into my everyday life. Um, but it's, it really is honestly more of a response than it is the first thing I do, as Pastor Craig was saying. Um, a response to someone's need who reaches out where I move into prayer, a response to my own need, my own whatever I bump up against, my anger, my pain in my day, where I move into prayer at some point in my day. It's a response and not the first thing that I do. And I so long for, for the first thing that I do every day to be like the psalmist says, I will seek you in the morning. I want to set up my day um, to allow his love to fill me and to shape how I will react and respond to whatever comes in my day. And I know that even when I set up my day in that way, I will still have to turn back to God many, many times throughout the day as I'm a human being. Um, but I need to be filled with his Holy Spirit and I want intercession to be an initiation and a protection in my life instead of a response when hard things happen. But God is so much more faithful to me than I am to him. He never fails to keep his appointments. You and I are always on his schedule. And he is so faithful, just the same as I've never regretted showing up at a prayer meeting Anytime I have set my heart to worship him, whether that was as a response or whether that was the first thing I did in my day, he has, a, has shown up in my life. He has poured his love out on me. And for me, that looks like worship. I turn on worship music. There's certain songs that are just so precious to me that I can enter into his presence. And it is something that I have practiced. It has taken time. And the place that I've practiced is in community. So if, if this is an area that's a struggle for you, if you, maybe if you don't even really know what I mean when I talk about coming into the presence of God at home or being filled with the Holy Spirit at home, community is where you learn about how to get there. It's how you practice it. It's how you get around other people, whether that's on our prayer meetings online, or in person, or whether that's a group where there's always prayer happening at the end of groups. Community is where um, you can learn how to enter into the presence of God if that's a struggle for you. And I want to acknowledge that there are seasons where it can be hard to get into the presence of God, where you may know how to get there, but maybe it just feels like God is far off. And again, I would say that community is what you're wanting to do. You want to move towards community, ask people to pray for you, push through that season, because I believe that as believers, our reality, our, our normality for, is to be like Romans 15, 13 says, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that by the power of the Holy Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope. We are to be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. We're to be filled with the Holy Spirit every day. And we find that through prayer on our own at home. And we find that through community. So right now, I'm just going to pray. And I'm going to pray for you um, for two things. If you struggle with community, if there's pain there for you, if, if getting online this year has been hard, if you had a struggle to connect, let me tell you, I have never had such powerful times of prayer. I have had some of the most powerful times of prayer I've ever had in my life on a screen, on Zoom, 
by myself in my house because the Holy Spirit is the same inside my house as he is when I gather with people in community. He's the same God. He can show up for you in your living room right now. He can fill you with his Holy Spirit. He is that big. And so if that's a struggle for you, we're going to pray right now. We're going to pray um, if community is a struggle for you. And if you, like me, struggle with putting, seeking God first in your day, I um, mean, you want that as I do. I'm going to pray for us. Um, So I'm going to pray from Ephesians 3. It says, I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the saints to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ, and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. And so, Father, I pray for those who struggle to get into community, who don't know the love of community, who don't, who've never experienced that, who struggle with it, who may have painful memories um, around church community. God, and I pray that right now you would put um, put healing in their heart, that you would give them the the, the energy and the ability to reach out to community. Father, I especially pray for those who struggle with getting online. Father, that you would just um, move in their homes, that you would show them that you are the same God inside their house as you are when we've gathered on a Sunday morning. Father, and I thank you for meeting with us every day. I thank you for the power of your Holy Spirit coming and filling us and enabling us and giving us the grace to meet you every day. In Jesus' name, amen. So good. Just everyday people trying to find our way to put his kingdom first in our life. Because when, he, when, that, when he's at the front of, the, of our life, everything begins to shift in our life. And um, I just touch on a couple of those things. It's always good if you want to learn how to do anything, go around somebody who's farther than you. And that's why if, if you want to, I think both of you referenced Tuesday prayer, just email prayer at horizonchurch.ca if you want to be a part of that and we can get you hooked up to be on the Zoom uh, talk and just learn how to do it. And it's progress over per- perfection. So over the next, uh, beginning next Sunday, for 21 days, we're going to have prayer and fasting at Horizon Church. And we're, like I said earlier, we're, we want to show you how. We want to inspire you. We want to equip you. We want to give you opportunity to participate because it's time. It's time to see some things shift. It's time for a fresh perspective. It's time to kick anxiety in the teeth. It's time to take some God risks. It's time to see a new, fresh perspective from heaven. It's time to see a breakthrough. It's time to step out of insecurity into the security of God. It's time to see God's love flow in us and through us. It's time to see a family member move over from out of darkness into into the marvelous light of God. It's time to see our town change. It's time to see diseases be healed. It's time to see loved ones who are, are wandered away from God, find their way back to God. It's time to see addicts set free. And I, I mean food addicts, I mean uh, screen addicts, I mean people who are addicted to to, um, to uh, drugs and other things, wherever our addiction is, addiction to approval. It's time to see things shift in our lives. It's time to see God's kingdom come and his will be done on earth as it is in heaven. No matter what's going on in the world around us, because it's going to be some tough sledding for a little while yet, no matter what's going on around us, that the God of the Bible, the God who is alive, the creator God, can come and live inside of us and begin to shift us from the inside out, to shift everything, to shift everything, to shift us first. And when he begins to lead our life, then things begin to shift in our life. It's not do all the other stuff and then, okay, God. No, it's put God first, Jesus said, and then all this other stuff, It comes into line. What's leading our life right now? Lord, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And if you've never made Jesus the forgiver and the leader of your life, today is the day. You don't have to wait for some special time. If you're watching this on a Tuesday night or a Wednesday, or it's right now, live right now, I want to encourage you to just say these seven little words. And it starts with this. God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Repentance, no matter how long I've been going in the wrong direction, and if you've been around Horizon, you know that the rest of it is, I can always turn around. 
I can always turn around. That's what repentance is. doesn't mean I've got to figure everything out, that I know all the answers. It just means I know I need God. And so if you're someone who's not sure if you're right with God, just pray that prayer with me in a moment. God, be merciful to me, a sinner. And if you pray that from your heart and you truly repent, then God transfers you from death to life, from darkness to light. He begins to make you new from the inside out and begins to change your future so that no longer is your history determining it, but God is determining your life. And I want you to be praying this week as we step into all that 21 is, to not be praying if you should fast, but be praying, God, what should I fast? It's part of the rhythm of being a follower of Jesus. What should I fast? And if you can fast food, let me encourage you to fast food. It may be, and not fast food like McDonald's fast food, but fast food. Don't have some, whether that's a lunch that you skip, or maybe that's a, maybe three days of, of a total uh, fa- food fast, or maybe it's 21 days of just eating only vegetables. But begin to pray and ask God, what should I fast so that I can take some time and reorient my life and put you in the leadership position of my life, leading my life, not the caboose, not even two or three, but first. Seek first his kingdom, and all the rest is going to be added unto you. And I urge you, pray first. That's what Paul said. So I'm going to pray, and then we're going to go to our post show here in a moment. Lord Jesus, for those that are not sure if they're right with you, wherever they're at right now, and if you're, if that's you right now, I want you to pray that prayer with me. God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Come into my life. Lead my life. Thank you that you forgive my sin, and I believe that you are the Lord of my life, that you died and arose again so into newness of life. And Lord, I pray for those that as we begin to posture our life this year in 2021, no matter what it holds, that you will be leading our life, that you will be first. You will be leading us in our family. You'll be leading us as college students. You'll be leading us in our marriages. You'll be leading us in our business, that every space and place, you would be first. In the strong name of Jesus, we pray. And everyone said, amen. Let's put God first in 2021. Post show. Come on, uh, man, I don't need to do a recap. I think Pastor Craig did a phenomenal job. Uh, what a great encouraging message. Now, I'm, I'm really big on taking practical steps. So what we're going to do right now, get out your email, however you got your email app, whatever it is, whether it's the Gmail app, email app you're getting on your desktop, and put out the little new email, click the little new, new note, new email, whatever you need to do. I'll wait. He's like, he's not going to wait. I'm going to wait. Wait for it. If you feel like God's speaking to you, don't put off. Don't do all. Oh, I can do it later. Get your email right now open. Type in prayer at horizonchurch.ca and then say, send me the Zoom link for Tuesday prayer. Even if you're not sure, just like take this next step to do it right now. Don't procrastinate. Don't wait. I'm telling you, it's going to be great. And I'll give you another little pro tip. On Tuesday at about 6.30, what you're probably not going to feel if you're new to prayer, this may happen if you're like me, you're not going to be super jazzed. You're going to think of seven different excuses why you probably don't need to go. You can do it next week. It's been a long day. I deserve this. You know, that nice little meme, like at the end of every day now during COVID, we're like, I deserve a break after every day after not really doing a whole lot. Um, But all that to say, prayer at horizonchurch.ca. We'd love to see you on there. I'll be there. Pastor Craig will be there. Jacob, Jacob, you're going to be there, right? Corin, you can show Jacob right now. Yeah. Well, a little behind the scenes. We're live people. All right. So prayer, it's going to be fantastic. Really excited about this. And again, this week, pray not if you should fast and pray about what you should be fasting as we pray for the next 21 days. Now we have one more. Yeah, we'll do one. I'm going to save this other one. It's a good one for our 8 p.m. So you maybe check on there. It's going to be a new one for 8 p.m. Uh, service that's happening. If you didn't know that, we have an 8 p.m. service. Last Q&A giveaway for the last $5 Starbucks card. This is your question, uh, host. It's question number four. On which social media platform did Prince Harry and Meghan Markle announce they were stepping down as senior royals and... What day of the week was it? You need the platform and what day of the week did uh, Harry and Meghan uh, step down as senior royals? We're waiting for it. Waiting for it. People are still like, I don't care about your trivia. I'm signing up for it. Yeah, that's part of it. Part of it was Instagram. What day of the week, Johnny? 
I'm going to roast you for knowing that uh, more than anyone else. But it was on Instagram, but you need Instagram and what day of the week. Two-part question, two-part question uh, on which social, what day of the week and social media platform. It was not a Tuesday. It was not a Tuesday. Close, Sean. It was not a Tuesday. It might have been there, but on the Google search I did, uh, it was a, it was a different day. Uh, <laughs> uh, not not the date. What day of the week? Like a Tuesday, Thursday. We're getting close here. We're getting close. Ben has gotten so close. Ben, I feel like I owe you a personal one. Um, wait for it. No, it's I'm not looking for the date. Like the eighth or the ninth. Looking for the day. The day of the week. So it was on Instagram, but what day? Was it a Thursday? Was it a Tuesday? Obviously, it wasn't those two because it wasn't a Friday. You literally could start going through Wednesday, Wednesday. So, Ben, you got half of it right again. It was, I'll give it to Ben. Instagram on a Wednesday. He had the two. He lives close to me. He knows where I live, so I need to give it to him because that could get dangerous. It was on Instagram on a Wednesday. Now, for those in the United Kingdom, it might have been a different day for you. But for here, it was a Wednesday on Instagram. Fun facts 2020. Anyways, love you guys so much. We will see you on Zoom at prayer. It's going to be a great time. And again, be looking and asking Holy Spirit, what should I be fasting this next, this next 21 days starting next Sunday? Love you guys. See you tomorrow. Are you pinching my... Ow!